Thanks for subscribing to a podcast series from Dave Cusack's New Artist Model, the online music business school for independent musicians. Our podcast series interviews musicians who are blazing trails in the digital era to help inspire other musicians to develop their own strategies for success. Our first series of interviews features MC Lars from Los Angeles, who has been touring internationally and releasing albums independently since 2003. MC Lars calls his music post-punk laptop rap and attributes much of his success to the philosophies and insight offered by Dave Cusack in his new artist model program. Check out MC Lars at mclars.com and follow him on Twitter at mclars. For free lessons and to find out how to enroll in Dave Cusack's new artist model, including his master class, essential class, or individual modules to help musicians fine-tune their skills, visit newartistmodel.com or follow Dave Cusack and New Artist Model on Twitter. Right when I finished college, um, I signed a deal with Universal, a publishing deal, and it was great because it gave me some capital to make videos and be on the road and kind of, since I was independent, it helped me do what I was doing, but it also allowed me to still write the kind of songs I wanted to write. So if you're going to sign a publishing deal, the best thing about a publishing deal is that it can give you some capital, but make sure you get your creative control because you don't want to give up your own voice. You don't want to sign some sort of deal where you have to write a certain a certain type of song in a certain type of genre if that's not you. Um, in terms of sync placements, a, a good publishing deal will help you get songs in movies and TV and commercials. But the other thing is if you sign a publishing deal, like I had a situation where there was a song for a show but my publishing company wanted more money for it than um, they thought they were being offered, but the, the show didn't have a big budget, so I wasn't able to use the song in the show. It would have been great exposure. So make sure that you know what you're getting into because while a publishing deal can open up opportunities, it can also make sync, sync licensing and placement a little more difficult um, because there's more cooks involved. If you're, let's say you own all your publishing and all your masters and everything, and, and someone emails you someone from a show, let's say, a, like a, a, a Fox Kid show or something, says, hey, we love your song, we want to use it. Sometimes if it's going through a lot of channels, it can delay things. And having a, a, a song synced um, to a TV show, a lot of times these people whose job is to get things licensed, they'll hit you up. Do you have a publisher? Are there any samples? And can we use this now? Because it's, there's such a fast turnover. So just be aware. There, there's a pluses and minuses to signing a, a publishing deal. And I think, though, at, when you start out, it, if it's the right deal, it can be really helpful. And if the people want to help spread the word. Um, I was able to collaborate with one of my all-time favorite artists, KRS-One, because he was had the same publishing company. And they played in my stuff. And he liked it. And I called him on the phone. And we came up with this concept about hip-hop and postmodern spirituality and, he, and that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have had Universal's blessing. So I'm very thankful for everything they've done for me and I'm very thankful now to be independent. Um, knowing about the writing side of things and, and the percentages and the, the, uh, the performance right organizations is very important. I use ASCAP. Their website is very easy to figure out. Um, and so every time I write a song, I sit down with the co-writers after we've written the song or done the demo, and, and I'll be like, okay, so let's say there's three of us in a room. Usually it's just easier to split a song in thirds, but let's say I come to the session with the beat, half of a beat and half of the lyrics, and then I have a keyboard player play, figure out a keyboard part, then we'll split it like three quarters, one quarter. Or let's say I'm guessing on a, a, a collaboration song with like, three other rappers, my percentage would be, so if I just do the lyrics, it would be, I guess, 12.5%. And then when you put it in the ASCAP server, you have to split those numbers in half because the total equals 50%. Basically, there's a lot of math that um, you have to be aware of and be on top of. But if you can, every time I finish a session, I'll be like, okay, well, you know, the three of us contribute evenly, let's all, let's split this in thirds. Usually people are cool about that. So just make sure you communicate. Um, some people do contracts, songwriting contracts, which is not not a bad idea. But if you're working with people you trust, uh, um, you might not need to do that. But learn about the ASCAP or BMI or CSAC or whatever your organization is. Learn how to use their website because 
If someone puts something incorrectly and you fix it, they have a really good uh, checks and balances system. And if your stuff's not registered and then something gets played on the radio somewhere or it's in a movie, uh, you can lose out on that money if you, if you don't do it right. Or, or another thing is, if you have someone else do it for you, um, sometimes people are sneaky and they like to add their names even if they didn't co-write the song. So just be on top of that stuff because that stuff can be, can, if you have a hit, it can be so lucrative. But you're in my Check out MC Lars at mclars.com and follow him on Twitter at mclars. For free lessons and to find out how to enroll in Dave Cusick's new artist model, including his master class, essential class, or individual modules to help musicians fine-tune their skills, visit newartistmodel.com or follow Dave Cusack and New Artist Model on Twitter. Hey.